Hello YouTube! In this video, I will show you 15 Blender things I've learned over the years to help improve your workflow when starting a project. Throughout the video, as I'm showing you the tips, I will also show you how I incorporate it into my workflow by making a scene out of it. The result will be shown at the end of the video. If you enjoy the content, remember to subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And with that, let's get started! To enhance your viewport solid view, using cavity is the way to go. You can enable this by going up to the shading drop down, selecting matte cap for lighting, and then enabling cavity. Now your viewport looks cleaner. A lot of people when starting off tend to extrude by first pressing E on their keyboard, right clicking, then using S to scale it inward or outward. But using this method can cause your models to create sort of a slope. An alternative way I learned is to head to the toolbar on the left side, hold down your mouse on the extrude region, and select extrude along normals. This now allows you to extrude inward or outward without creating any of the slopes. I use this method to create the train track pillars as you can see here. An array modifier is useful in a lot of ways. It is a great non-destructive way to duplicate the same model and decide how long you want it to be. Using an array modifier, I duplicated a train track as well as light poles. Same as the last tip, instead of using an array modifier, you can simply press Shift R to repeat your previous action. This is useful when you are trying to duplicate something across the scene without having to place them individually. Shift S is a great way to move something around the scene. I like to use it to move my 3D cursor to an area I want it to be in so when I spot in the object, I wouldn't have to move it across my scene. By using Shift H, it hides everything but what you have selected. This could be useful when you have a model with a lot of parts and would like to isolate certain part to work on it. For example, here I isolated this mesh to work on it without having to process anything else. When modeling, it can be hard to select an entire object without selecting something you didn't want to select. An easy way to get around this is to press L on an object's face and it will automatically select the entire object for you. Modeling a support beam can be challenging, especially if it requires you to do some weird things. Poke faces are a great way to create this general shape without having to do much work. I use this technique to add more details to an object. This could be useful to create support beams if you combine it with a wireframe and a bevel modifier. Pipes are hands down the hardest thing to model in my opinion, but I found out that you can replicate the same effect with curves and skip the modeling step entirely. Using a curve, you can extrude this depth to create a shape. Then you can pretty much shape out the pipe and put it around your scene. A good and fast way to create pipes. Sometimes you might want to just put pipes onto buildings and make it look like it's worn down and not perfect. With a curve, you can delete its vertice in edit mode, then heading to the toolbar, you can select the draw tool. After that, go to the right side, click on tool, and make sure your depth is set to surface. Now you can draw on any surfaces. The real snow add-on is a useful way to get a free snow texture, but also a quick and dirty way to add snow to your scene without doing much work. To enable this, go up to edit, then preferences, underneath add-on, type in real snow. Click the box next to it and then head back to your project and press end to bring up the sidebar. You will now see real snow. Now click on any object you want the snow to be placed on and press add snow. You can change the setting to whatever you want, but I like it as the default. The decimate modifier is useful if you have a high poly object that you want to place in the background but don't want it to take too much rendering power. With a decimate modifier, you can lower its poly count and it will still look good from afar. The render view can be a bit daunting to go into since it can slow down your computer tremendously. The good way to get past this is to render only what your camera sees. To do this, simply go into your camera view and press Ctrl B and a box should appear. Dragging this box over your camera, you are able to isolate your render view to only what the camera sees. This pass is an alternative for using the principal volume node in Blender. It's less render intensive and could replicate exactly what a principal volume node can do. To do this, head into the viewport properties and enable mist. Next, go into your camera properties and under viewport display, enable mist to see it. Under world properties and then under the mist pass, drag the depth until it goes past your scene. After you have rendered out a still frame, head into your compositor and enable use nodes. Now add in a mixed node and plug the original image into the first image slot. 
Using a color ramp node, plug the mist option into its factor and plug the color ramp's image option into the mix nodes factor. Now adjusting your color ramp would change the way your mist look. By holding down shift and control, then clicking on the node, you can view exactly how that node is affecting your render. This is useful for when you're creating a mist pass and you want to see how your render is being affected by the mist. And that was 15 things I've learned throughout the years. I hope some of it could be useful in your project as well. As promised, here is how I incorporated those tips into my render.